So here is a case of diffuse lung disease. A little more subtle finding, but I think that it's pretty evident if you look closely. So throughout the lungs, there is this tree and bud and central lobular nodularity. It's everywhere. And the more you look, the more you see. Might be a little subtle. So we can zoom up here in the right lung. You're gonna see a lot of these areas of very subtle, very small, but profuse nodularity. In these cases, it's very helpful often to use the MIP images to bring out the degree of nodularity. So these are MIP images, maximum intensity projection images, which show this subtle, but again, profuse branching nodularity throughout the lungs. It's a very fine nodularity, but it's clearly there. And it has this branching morphology that we expect in tree and bud opacities. Let's again look in the right lower lobe. Very, very fine. And so this is actually a little different than most cases of tree and bud nodularity. So as you know, most cases of tree and bud nodularity are gonna be due to either aspiration or infection or somehow related to bronchiectasis as a manifestation of small airway disease in relation to the large airway disease of bronchiectasis. But in this case, this tree and bud central lobular nodularity is actually not related to the airways. So usually tree and bud nodularity is related to airway abnormalities, so stuff within the airways, so mucus or pus or secretions or aspirated material within the small airways causing that tree and bud morphology. In this case, it's actually due to pulmonary arterial abnormalities. So remember the pulmonary arteries and the bronchi travel together. So this, in this patient, uh, the patient was injecting things that they shouldn't have been injecting, oral medications. So oral medications, sometimes amphetamines, can be injected intravenously after being crushed into a slurry into either saline or even tap water. And then when it's injected intravenously, it'll travel to the lungs eventually, get into the small pulmonary arterioles. And there, because these the fillers within these oral tablets, things like talc and methyl cellulose, they can't pass through the smallest vessels within the, the pulmonary architecture. They get trapped there and cause this chronic localized granulomatous inflammation. And the problem here is that obviously it's a diffuse process because the blood flow goes throughout the lungs. And so very often you'll get this subtle, fine tree and bud and central lobular nodularity throughout the lungs, maybe a little more prominent at the lung bases, because again, the lung bases, we get more blood flow there than we do in the upper aspect of the lungs. And I think it's subtle, but I think there is certainly a gradation between the way the lungs look superiorly in terms of nodularity and the way the lungs look in terms of nodularity at the lung bases. So this is something we call excipient lung. So excipient lung is essentially the manifestation of oral medications, very often amphetamines, which are crushed into a slurry, into a, either into tap water or saline or some other solution and inter in, injected intravenously. So I want to contrast that tree and bud nodularity to tree and bud nodularity related to the airways. And so this is a patient with upper lung proponent bronchiectasis, some cavitary disease as well. So this patient had cystic fibrosis and likely with some superimposed infection as well. I think the patient might have had superimposed pseudomonas, pseudomonas or Klebsiella. But let's look at the tree and bud nodularity in this patient. So this patient has tree and bud nodularity within all lobes. But you see how the tree and bud here is much more conspicuous. And this really will slap you in the face. It's not subtle. And in most cases of tree and bud nodularity, which are related to aspiration infection or in relation to bronchiectasis, as in this case, the tree and bud is not diffused throughout the lungs like we saw in that case of excipient lung. So that's your first indication. So tree and bud nodularity, most cases of tree and bud nodularity that we're gonna see which are due to aspiration, pneumonia, or somehow related to bronchiectasis are gonna be much more patchy than the excipient lung tree and bud nodularity. Also the tree and bud nodularity, again, in, in these case of airway related tree and bud nodularity, they are much more conspicuous 
than the subtle treatment by nodularity that we saw in that case of excipient lung. It's probably related to the amount of abnormality that you actually have within that structure, as well as level within that either airway or pulmonary artery or vessel. Let's again pull up the MIPS here, which bring out nodularity. There's some nice mucus plugging within some of these airways. But again, the treatment by nodularity is much more conspicuous. Even the finest treatment by nodularity that we see here in the right lower lobe, much more conspicuous, really slaps you in the face. And I think one of the reasons why it might be more conspicuous is, again, it's larger, but also you have some areas of normal lungs. So you have some portion of normal lung here, which act as your baseline, which makes your eyes be able to detect these areas of treatment button nodularity uh, much better because you have your internal frame of reference. As opposed to those cases of excipient lung, very often it's a diffuse process. Again, the pulmonary artery blood flow is going throughout the lung parenchyma. And for that reason, very often it's going to be a very homogeneous process. And there may be very little areas which can act as sort of your baseline level of what's normal. So these are some of the pearls that I use to try to differentiate the tree and bud nodularity from excipient lung from the tree and bud nodularity that we see in airways related lung disease, which again, most often is due to aspiration, pneumonia, or bronchiectasis.